Hello everyone. Welcome to cloud computing sessions. In this session, uh, we will discuss advanced concepts uh, which are covered in unit number five, like Docker, containers, Kubernetes. So in lesson one, we will focus on understanding containers. So uh, the outline for today's lesson is uh, what is container, then we will briefly discuss what is Docker, benefits of Docker, Docker architecture and uh, the world before Docker and virtual machines and then world with containers, how the Docker has improved the execution environment. This will be the outline for the session. So what is a container? Containers are isolated processes for each of your application component. Uh, as you have developed many applications, many softwares, you may have required different libraries for executing that application. Let us take an example of a simple uh, web application that you may have developed. For that execution of that web application, you may have deployed Apache kind of a web server, MySQL database. Uh, then HTML uh, uh, support for your HTML, PHP or maybe Angular React kind of a, a JavaScripts. So these all libraries must be deployed on the computer on which you are planning to execute that application. So what is a container? Container can uh, bring these all dependent, the dependencies library requirements under one roof and it can run that particular process as an isolated environment. That means all the necessary packages, all the necessary libraries which are required by the application can be containerized, can be brought under one roof, one sandbox. So that is why uh, containers are treated as an isolated environment, they are self-contained. What do you mean by uh, self-contained is, whatever libraries are required are contained by the container or by that particular process. It really do not depend on any of the external system to support the required libraries. Of course, it needs support from the operating system and underlying hardware to execute this uh, application. Required libraries are contained inside that particular image, that particular container. It can run as an isolated process. So when a container starts execution, it really do not depend on any other process for required dependencies. All the dependencies packages are in the container. So we can say that it runs in a complete isolation. It is independent. A uh, container while execution really do not depend on any other process. Uh, failure of any other container, failure of any other application will not result into the uh, any kind of uh, alteration or any kind of uh, disturbance in the execution of a container. So it is independent. Lastly, it is a portable. So uh, if you create a container, if you create an image uh, which eventually run as an, a container, so you can uh, take that image and port it to the any other environment. Like let us say you have created an image of a required libraries, required application softwares and that image is created on your uh, laptop. Then you can port this image of a container or, or uh, of your application into a production environment. Let us say on server or maybe on the cloud environment which supports containers and all. So it is highly portable. What is Docker? Docker is an open source platform for developing, shipping and running applications. So uh, Docker is an ecosystem which have complete solution for creating images, running them as an a containers and managing them, porting them, shipping them. Everything that we uh, appli application developer might expect from a particular containerized container system, that entire solution ecosystem is built inside a Docker. It enables you to separate your application from your infrastructure. So when, uh, what is the meaning of infrastructure? Let us say I have a server on which I really want to uh, deploy the production environment, but uh, uh, development team is using their laptops. So uh, there will be uh, less concern when we will be migrating the application from development team's laptop on the uh, actual production servers. So it is like separate your application execution from the underlying infrastructure. It will not uh, have any effect whether you are running the application on your laptop or you are running it in the production server because container will have all the dependencies required by your application inside it. So it results obviously into a quick delivery and it enables package 
and run application in the containerized environment. So, Docker provides tools and platform for managing the life cycle of a container. Start from starting from creating a simple image which have different layers, including kernel, required dependencies, application, all the libraries, till uh, the time of creating a container, executing it. Uh, having a communication between different containers everything and then finally uh, when the job is done you may consider shutting down the container so entire life cycle can be managed using the docker platform benefits of docker uh, it's fast and consistent delivery of your application is possible so containers are great for continuous integration and continuous delivery it is also referred as ci cd in workflows so, as this container have all the dependencies built inside it, uh, they are portable, they are running in isolated environment, they are independent, they enable you to have a continuous integration of uh, new improvements, new updates into the existing environment and delivery of this such uh, updates is very convenient. Responsive deployment and scaling. So, if it comes to load balancing, if you want to scale your application to support uh, more number of users you have to just run more number of containers uh, against the image that you have created for it. So, it is really helpful when you want to scale your application for supporting multiple users or uh, more uh, new coming uh, dependencies or uh, new incoming requests. So, it can run on laptop, server, virtual machine, data centers, cloud platform and mixture of this environment. So, let us say earlier you started with the simple standalone server which have which is running your application. Now, the, as the user base is increasing, you need to support a uh, more number of users. Uh, ultimately, you need more computing, more network, more storage. You can migrate the same images, same containers to the data center. You can ship it to the cloud platform or you can manage have a mix of this like you have some portion running on a cloud, some portion running on your own infra, some portion running on the data centers. A mix of infrastructure can also be used for scaling of your application. Running more workloads on the same hardware like uh, images are very lightweight. They contain uh, only the required dependencies, only the required packages under them. So, ultimately the requirement of uh, compute cycle, requirement of a memory, requirement of uh, uh, resources from your underlying hardware for a container execution are very limited compared to virtual machines. So, they are fast. So, viable and cost effective alternative to hypervisor based virtual machines. Let us say uh, if we are really wanting to have isolated environments on a single hardware and we are planning to deploy multiple applications on a single system, uh, one may consider uh, creating virtual machines, one for application one, second for the application two, for dedicated virtual machines for the applications. A virtual machine have a, a better resource utilization aspect of course, but they also consume lot of resources. Compared to that, containers require very less number of resources and can be uh, uh, can provide you the same isolated uh, independent execution environment that is offered by a virtual machine. Although uh, combination of a containers and a virtual machine will be a greater result that we will discuss further in the sessions. So, let us discuss docker architecture. So, as you can see in this diagram, there is a client which is on the left hand side. Uh, which have certain, uh, this client is a basically a, a interface uh, which is interacting with the docker daemon which is inside docker host. And on the very right side, uh, we have a registry. So, uh, if we understand this complete uh, ecosystem, the docker host is actually a combination of images running containers which are managed by docker daemon. So, what is a docker daemon? Basically, it is a process uh, if you go to your system and check under executing processes, you will find something called as docker d. So, docker d stands for docker daemon. So, uh, this process basically uh, continuously listens for the incoming request. Now, from whom this process will receive incoming request? It will receive from the client. Now, a docker client will have certain application programming interfaces, certain commands which are provided by docker daemon and using this docker uh, uh, APIs, your client will be able to send instructions to the docker daemon to get whatever required job done it is willing to. So, client will have a CLI 
command line interface as well as there is a UI based application using which you will be able to interact with the docker daemon process. So, docker client is a command line uh, interface as well as a desktop based UI based interface is available. So, docker desktop is a kind of a single solution in which you will be able to interact with docker daemon, you will be able to interact with the docker registry. Uh, you will be able to launch containers against the images which are available on your computer or you will be able to fetch the images which are available on the repository. So, docker desktop is a, a kind of a system which have multiple layers inside it. Docker registries, uh, docker hub is a web portal on which there are pre-designed, pre-configured templates are available. These templates are called as images. So, here on the right side, you can see uh, there is a uh, vertical box on, in which it is written as uh, images, which have some different titles as Nginx, there is a logo of Ubuntu, there is a logo of uh, My, MySQL, then there is a Postgres and uh, there is a box. So, what it means it is indicating is that uh, these uh, standard images are available on the Docker Hub web portal you have to fire a command which is called as a docker pull. So, what happens is let us say you have a, a, a command line interface on your computer and docker daemon is running on your computer. If you execute this docker pull command, it will be requesting your docker uh, daemon running on your computer. So, for example, the command could be docker pull nginx or docker pull ubuntu. Huh? So, uh, as for this diagram, here uh, you will find that uh, Ubuntu logo is available in the registry which is on the very right, uh, right side of this box here, whereas uh, the docker pull command is interacting with the daemon process which is on which is running on the uh, docker host. So, daemon process will figure out that okay, this Ubuntu image which is requested from the command line interface by the user, it is, uh, it is not available on the computer. So, it will send a pull request to the registry and it will bring the Ubuntu file on your machine. It will not execute it because the command fired by us is docker pull. So, it will just refetch the image and it will put under the images uh, vertical here, this is the images uh, vertical on your computer. So, it will put it under the images vertical, right. So, uh, you execute docker pull command. When you execute a docker pull command, it will send a request to the docker daemon. Docker daemon will find a check into the available images, it will figure out, it will see that the image is not available in the local repository. So, it will further send this pull request to the repository which is running on the docker website, docker hub portal. From this portal, it will locate this Ubuntu image which is required using the docker pull command and it will fetch that image and it will put it inside the local repository. So, that is the how you can interact with the command line interface. Uh, to fire commands and get job done from the docker daemon. Now, let us say we use docker run command shown here. So, if I execute docker run command, what docker daemon will say that it will check whether the docker run command which is it is trying to execute it is that image is available in the local repository or not. So, let us create a fresh scenario. Let us say I executed docker run command again for the Ubuntu. So, docker run command uh, will request daemon that I want to execute Ubuntu container. Now, daemon will figure out that okay, this uh, Ubuntu image is not available in the local repository. So, it will again send a pull request to the docker hub host, docker hub website. From this website, this Ubuntu image will be fetched and will be put under the images. Now, here the docker pull command would have stopped his or uh, its execution would have completed. What will happen in the case of docker run is after fetching the image on the docker images folder, it will execute the image as in a container, right. So, docker run and docker pull this is a difference. Docker pull will check the local repository if the image is not available, they will fetch it from the docker portal. In the case of docker run, they will bring down the image and they will start execution. 
so these are the docker objects like images and container the i hope you people have got a kind of idea how the docker works what is a docker in the upcoming sessions we will continue with the benefits of docker and its application its effect on the execution environment and production environment thank you